go! This is how much I will get paid if people will watch this content at some point. Welcome to the next episode of Lotus Lab. Welcome. Today we're gonna speak about something about about an aspect of rank that is pissing me off and should be pissing you off as well. And we're gonna try to educate people how not to do that and try to be a better player in ranked. So we're gonna talk about over peaking at on defense. It's something that is happening every day at every rank. And as much as I as I can say that, oh, you know, at lower ranks, it's understandable. People should, maybe don't know how to play defense properly. But at Immortal 3 and Low Radiant, one could expect that people will know, right? Unfortunately, not true. If someone was watching today's stream, you will know what we're talking about. But let's speak about Ascent, because today's, um, today's matches on Ascent were absolutely terrible. So what was happening? The defenders were overstepping the boundaries, boundaries, and that is one of the problems that is happening on ranked on maps like Ascent, Haven specifically as well, because it's so easy to misunderstand what is your job as a defender, right? So let's say you're a killjoy player on B main, and you have your setup, you have your little turret that is watching the entrance, you have your nano swarms, right? And you're playing correctly on B side somewhere, playing off your utility. Suddenly, your jet or Reyna goes, Hur dur, I'm just gonna go B main. So what happens here? There are a few things that can happen. If your opponents are playing default, there's most likely one player just that was just gonna hold B main, right? With a trap or something and just wait for this jet to just push into that B main and get a kill on her, which then makes it super ineffective for that killjoy because her utility is useless for the most of the round just because the jet decided to push because no one is going to go into that b main after that jet kills the dies sorry because then the opponents will just gather up together and just probably go on the side where the sentinel is not at so there's you can ask yourself what is the range what is the range of motion that i can do to not endanger the line of defense by overstepping my boundaries Right? So, if you were talking about B main, for example, let's clear everything. When we're talking about B main, if you're not a chamber, if you're not a Yoru, if you're not... I would say those two, mainly, right? Because they have the mobility, they have the way of getting out. Jetta to some degree as well, but she's more uh, constrained with the way she can move, right? You don't want to overstep exactly the barrier. Because how do you get out? If you're getting caught off guard, how do you get out? You can't. Chamber can because he can just have the TP range to like here, and that's basically it. Wait, did they actually uh, fix the TP range? Yes, it's the new TP range. Look how big of the TP range can be done. Like, Chamber can be still standing here and guarding it, but only Chamber, right? Yoru to some degree as well because he has a timer on it, so he can get a first contact and TP out to safety. But if you're any other character and you just die in this area over here, that is essentially putting strain on the defense because then you lose map control. And if you if, if you were watching yesterday's episode, this is all connected. All of those are like you're actively working against the micro objectives of the defenders because it's the attacker's job to cross the barrier line, to cross the choke points on um on 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 the map to attack a site. If if you're dying before the opponent did that then you are trolling your team. You are griefing your team because your defenders are now less efficient. The other people who played the game patiently are waiting for the attackers to do anything, now are getting punished just because you went too, too far. You were too cocky. You were trying to take too much space and because of that, you died. And that is a big issue that was happening today and not every day. It's happening every day. Overstepping this line, pushing into A, into a trap, dying here, and without having a sense of like going back or having the means of going back with a TP or anything. And also going one for one. That's another aspect that people don't understand because when the round starts, right, and your jet pushes this A main into the Sentinel that is just guarding this area, right, as on a default, and this jet dies, sorry, kills the killjoy, but there's a second player that will just trade the killjoy, then the attackers are actually winning. Why? Because the map stays the same, while the number of players is different. And the attackers can group up together and play 
on one side, while the defenders will now have to play the same area that they were playing at the beginning of the map, but with less defenders. So they are losing map control. They have less utility to stop the potential pushes. pushes. So every death for the defenders before the plant and just going one for one in trades is not really efficient. That is efficient for the attackers, not for the defenders. And that's why it's so important to understand that, go that being an over-aggressive player on defense is going to hurt you long term, even if you get one kill per round. That is not a good job. If you're staying on your side and you're waiting for an execute and you get a kill because they pushed you, that's fine. All right, let's say there's a full execute and the, the fate is just anchoring A side. If she holds the push, uses her utility, uses the hound, you know, sees to stop the push, she just tries to peek, gets a kill on one player and then dies? And goes one for one that's fine because you are anchoring side and you are trying your best but if you are over pushing your boundaries and you went for one for one then it's terrible for you because you gained no informations there's no commitment from uh from the opponents and they have still free reign on the map but if your opponents commit to a site then your teammates can commit to rotations because they understand what is happening right which is something that you don't gain if your opponent are just playing defaults and just killing your defenders because they acted like an attacker. So yeah, how to fix that? Play on your side. Exactly what is happening. I don't know what is happening. So you try to be you try to be an anchor on side. You try to respect the other players in your team. Right? If if I am playing on ascent and let's say I'm I'm typically your right? I'm typically Yoru. On Ascent defense, I'm playing on A side. Typically because I have the best possibilities when it comes to rotations with my TPs. Sometimes I swap to B if I see there's, a, there's like a problem on the map. But if I typically would have like a composition like Killjoy is playing B, B main. Uh, Omen is playing with the Killjoy on, on the market, right? Then we have, uh, let's say, Sova. Sova playing on short. And then there's one flex player. Let's assume maybe it's going to be, I don't know, race. And she's on, on A as well, right? But that's six players. How did the hell? Well, here we go. We don't need that. So in this case, as a Yoru player here, I don't want to be over aggressive because I know I can punish my teammates by being the over aggressor. If I'm pushing too much into A and die, then most likely mid is now being moved for the player because the omen has to rotate, right? Or the killjoy player will have to now push back onto A and retake because I weakened the defenses of A, A and the players will just push into A and punish us. So essentially, I don't want to grief my teammates by acting like a dumb player, right? So you fix that by just posting your position and playing for commitment, for their commitment, for, for opponent's commitment. And unless that is happening, you just have your lane. If I'm playing short, I'm staying short till, the, I, till I get information that something is definitely happening from the attackers. If they are pushing four players on B main, then I will rotate towards B because that's a lot of players, right? And we have most likely an anchor on A side that just stays here and guards. And I'm going to tell, yo, I'm rotating towards B, so I'll stay A. Because we still have to make sure that we have A guarded in case there's one lurker or was it fake. But all of that is like based on respect, of mutual respect to your teammates and not trying to grieve them. So what I'm trying to just teach you today, be a little bit more patient on your defense play. Not every single round is being decided in the first 10 seconds, right? Take your time. Being patient this game is very rewarding when you're just holding an angle and you can get rewarded by, you know, someone else peeking, dry peeking to your corner and just dying, just like that. Which probably happens if you over aggress and you push over your boundaries, over the side of the attackers. Thank you for watching. See you guys, I guess, next year. Hey, bye bye.